content is king. I don't yep. believe that you can produce too much content because there's all these filters and things like that. And if you put enough out there, more people will see it. Welcome to the Matt Laracy Project. This is a show about all things real estate, business, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Each show consists of myself, Matt Laracy, and a guest. This is season three, episode two, lending in the new normal. And today we have Mr. Benjamin Cohen with us. Ben, how are we doing today? Great, man. Thanks for asking, bud. Do you go by Benjamin or Ben? Whatever they want to call me, I go by. Does anybody call you B? No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll start calling them B. You, you can know? do that. Um, so Ben's with Guaranteed Rates. Uh, guaranteed Rates, uh, would you say a pretty big outfit here in Chicago? Yes, just a little bit. How come they bought uh, the White Sox Stadium, not the Cubs Stadium? Uh, better deal. <laughs> okay. Do you, guarantee, are you a Sox fan? I'm a Cubs fan. Okay. I'm, I'm actually a both fan now, these days. Are you going to the opening days in two days? For yeah, everybody I'll, that's... I'll be there with every other 40,000 fans. Are they allowing fans in the thing? No. no. Oh, man. So anyway, so Ben's one of the top lenders in the state. Uh, would you say you're the, the top lender? We're, we're, is there rankings for lenders? There is. Uh, number one in the state, number two in the country. So... I mean, I would have preferred to be number one in the country, yeah. but we'll let that slide for yeah. now. So uh, we brought Ben in here today uh, because the lending situation has changed a little bit given the COVID situation. And a lot of our guests and listeners out there have been asking us a lot of questions about this. Uh, and Ben's been, Ben, how long have you been in lending for? 17 years. Did you do anything before this? I was a technical architect for an IT company. What does that even mean? What is that, a technical architect? That means I made a third party systems talk to one another. So, okay. you know, I, my background is in IT, believe it or not, of all things. And somehow I ended up selling mortgages for a living. What made you w want to jump to that specifically and then jump to guaranteed rate? My degree was in computers. Okay. Uh, I traveled the world. I lived in Europe for two and a half years. I lived on an airplane 24-7. I got tired of it. Uh, I wanted to get into sales. Somehow, I lent, ended up in lending. And there we here go. I am 17 years and he, later. Here he is. So, here we are. Um, you know, talking about the lending scheme, what has changed since pre-shelter-in-place, which is SIP guys, and post-shelter-in-place? Has there, has there been a lot of differences? Yeah, that's a pretty general question. So at the end of the day, there's a lot we can go. We could talk about a lot of different things, whether it's appraisals, whether it's underwriting, whether it's down well, payment requirements. So give how, me more how about, we, how about we start with the fact that when shelter in place was announced day one, how much yeah. business would you say you lost that day? Um, none. None. No. We lost about 10 to 12% of our business. It was like World War III happened and a bomb was blown up and everybody was trying to pull right. out of contracts. And I've watched a lot of lenders give us these fake disapproval letters saying they couldn't get loans. Yes. And people walked away from earnest money. It was pretty I, crazy. I shouldn't say we lost none. We, def we definitely lost some because people were furloughed or lost their jobs or right. gotten reductions in income. But what happened when COVID hit is rates started to tumble. Yeah. So. And has has it changed your day-to-day? -day? Like, are you guys going in the office and stuff like that? Have you guys been allowed to? Um, no, we are not going in the office. Everybody, for the most part, is working remotely. There's a few people going into different offices, but it's, you know, not just six feet apart. It's like, you know, a few people on a floor only. Okay. So, so there's only a few people total going in there. Do you yes. plan on going back to the office this year? Uh, TBD. Don't know. Does Guarantee Rate can allow people back in the office full time, like the whole staff? It's not up to us. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's up to the governor. So I think if we had our way, we'd want people to come into the office. But, you know, we did a survey. We have 6,500 employees nationwide. 4,200 of our employees responded. 88% of people said they're okay working from home. Yeah, I, I think that's a big trend. It's crushing the office market because then we work residential. But for the office market, they're getting they're getting crushed. Are, are you? Um, have they done? Has Guarantee Rate put any new uh, rules in place since uh, COVID started? As far as like uh, minus offices, like any new procedures that you guys have to do with your clients or anything like that, any waivers or anything. In the real estate side, we have to sign these COVID waivers to show properties. To me, they're kind of like false sense no, of security. No, no, we don't know because, you know, we're not in that sand. But, you know, for the most part in our business, everything was digital prior to COVID. So we were kind of already ready for this. So how, is, how has COVID affected the rates? 
It's helped dramatically. Like, why have the rates dropped because of COVID? Uh, I, the, the Fed is pumping money into mortgage-backed securities, which is driving interest rates down. Do you so think- I think they're trying to stimulate home buyers and refinance people's mortgages so they can take money and spend it and pump it into the economy. So they're trying to make capitalism be capitalism by... You sure. Know, you spend I mean, more listen, money to keep the economy going. I don't have my degree in economics, so yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure what they're doing or why they're doing it. But right. if I had to guess, I would assume that's why the market is where the market is today. You've got inventory, which you can probably speak to, is low. Right. You have rates that are low, and you have people that want to buy a house. High demand. So yeah. when there's, I, I didn't say I, I got D's in uh, economics, but I believe. There was a law that said if there's low supply and high demand, that prices go up. Correct. So um, has like so since COVID, obtaining a mortgage, like just a pre-approval process, has anything changed with the approval process for buyers now? So typically, when we issue a pre-approval letter in the past, we would give that borrower you, you'd refer me a customer, we'd pre-approve them, yep. and I'd say, okay, Joe Smith, when you get ready to buy a house, we'll give you a letter specific to that home. Now. We're doing more generic pre-approval letters up front because at the end of the day, and you can probably talk to this, I'm hearing that people can't even get into a house without a pre-approval letter. That's correct. Just to view it. So um, in in our side, in order to show homes, a lot of people are, especially people with kids or that have elderly parents or something, require a COVID disclosure signed uh, that pretty much says you haven't traveled anywhere uh, and you have to show a pre-approval letter to get in. Now that was really big for a while and now that the market's not softening up but you could kind of sense we're in the mix of probably a shift that's going to happen here pretty soon you can already see inventory starting to build i said uh once july 4th hits we're going to see inventory start to build and we're seeing it now i have a lot of sellers who are requiring all that now saying just like get them in the door like i don't yeah. miss any showings well i kind of like that people were forced to have a pre-approval because you know you've got a lot of buyers that go in and look at a property that haven't even spoken to a lender yet. Uh, you know, so like uh, there's certain companies, I won't name any names, yeah. but you'll get a, a two hour notice for showing and they have no intention on buying a place. Right. For for us, it's actually made, I, I would say that my time has never been more efficient in my life because I, up until probably about a month ago, I was getting no lucky loose. Like everybody right. was going to buy. This right. wasn't somebody who wanted to buy. These, these Everybody was right. had to buy. Right. So it's it's made our industry a little bit more efficient. Um, it is... Is like the uh, attaining the application of getting a mortgage more complex of like just getting the approval or no? It's pretty straightforward. So, uh, yes and no. If you're a W two wage earner, we haven't really missed a beat. Okay, so if you're an employee of a company, yep, nothing has really changed. What we do now is when you get a mortgage and you go through the process, it goes really well and really smooth from A to Y. Right. And then you get to Z. Yeah. And you've got attestation forms that you have to sign, basically saying you aren't aware of any change in your employment, yeah. your income. There's five questions that we make people ask these days. We now need a pay stub dated within two weeks of your close date to make sure that you haven't taken a salary reduction. That you still have your job and everything like that. And, they, and then we're now also calling 24 hours prior to close, and we have to call the employer. And that's proving to be difficult because no employer is at their office phone because they're not working at their office. Have you lost a lot of deals because people lost their job the day before close? No, we usually find out before that happens. It usually doesn't happen the day before close. We've, we've had, that, had, we've had yeah. a couple of those. So Not with Ben, though. Yeah. With other people. Yeah. So we, you know, we try to put all those procedures in place prior to, so we don't have to deal with that. I would tell you the closing process is a little bit of a disaster these days because it's busy. Right. You know, there is a watermelon going through a garden hose right now in the lending world just due to capacity, weather, because everybody in America essentially is refinance eligible. So is everybody's trying to refi, right? Because everybody's rates are trying to refinance. And everybody's then... trying to buy homes. Everybody's trying to close in two weeks because everything is crazy competitive. Right. And you're going against cash offers, multiple offers, all of that good stuff. So, you know, the ability to execute and get a loan done, appraisers are backed up like crazy 
Um, so everybody is just kind of busy in the lending landscape, if so, you will. So people are busy. That's my, my most hated word is when people tell me they're busy. I'm but, never busy enough. But uh, <laughs> the uh, – so, okay, so let's back it up though. Yeah. Would you say self-employed loans then are, are even more difficult given this climate today? Extremely difficult. Okay, so if you own a company and you try to hide all your money by tax write-offs and stuff like that, those are – So that's always been difficult. So right. let's talk a little specifically about the self-employed because I will – tell you this week if I've spoken to 20 self-employers I'm probably two for 20 and getting them qualified and what's the difference just the fact that like there's no not as many workarounds cause here's the difference the difference is we in the past we would take a self-employed borrower and we'd look back two years on the tax returns yeah okay now they don't care about the last two years of tax returns they take it as a baseline so they'll take your you know everybody's on extension right now so they'll take your 2018 tax return yeah. as a baseline. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to say, hey, Matt, you own your own real estate agency. Yeah. I want to see 60 days P and L on right. 2020, the most recent 60 days. And then I want to also see every business bank statement so we can prove that the business bank, the deposits being put into the business bank account are one number and then the withdrawals coming out are another. So as an example, you bring in $10,000 a month in deposits, right. you have $9,000 in expenses, we're gonna give you credit for $1,000 a month in income. Right. That's not gonna qualify you for very much on a mortgage side. That is yeah. the most difficult part right now. You have an SBA loan, you have a PPP loan yeah. that gets subtracted from your income. Yeah. That is a major deal killer for most people right now. So people out there that are listening, when you're self-employed, a lot of people are not making as much money as you would normally make given the climate and the environment. So these people are, if they're going off 60 days, uh, most recent days, and they've been struggling, they're, they're probably not getting approved. They are not getting approved. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, now what's been difficult is, you know, we're in what July. Mm -hmm. So most people are providing April and uh, May statements, which were horrible, which months. were terrible. Right. So over the last week, I've got a lot of customers that said, look, you know, May 15th, I'm back to 80% of where I was. And I'll say, okay, well call me when you've got June and Comments July September. and then we'll yeah. or then we'll revisit whether it's a purchase or a refinance. So that's for refi too. They have to have that. Absolutely. Same thing. So self-employed or, you know, that's a big thing in, in, um, you know, a big industry for, for sales and for refis It's just, you know, a lot of people are self-employed and people try to write off the maximum amount. It's always been difficult as, now as possible, which I never understood. I don't know how they get away with it. Cause I, I get like no write-offs, but like, you know, I guess there's ways around everything. What um, about, what about the, uh, like lenders are handling like, like in-person procedures, you know, like you used to do, you know, like did people ever go to guaranteed rate and sign? Cause I know some people would go in and hand sign like loan documents and things of that nature, you know? So when I started 17 years, I used to go to people's homes every single night and, and would you fax it back? applications. <laughs> we would sign it. We would make edits. It was all the old school. I've been in guaranteed rate now, I believe 10 years and I, you know, I can't even count on one hand the number of people that I meet in person these days. So for you guys, this, you know, maybe your company was already kind of built to be a little bit more we virtual. We were up already prepared for this. What about like home appraisals and stuff like that? Has, are you seeing a lot more uh, virtual home appraisals? Yes. Uh, the word virtual, uh, we want to be careful of because there's basically two types of drive. There's two types of appraisals. There's a full interior and exterior. Yeah. There is a drive-by. Yeah, and there is no appraisal. I just think a drive-by is always funny. Yeah, I just, I, know. I just imagine the worst. I, I hear drive-by, my my mind immediately thinks about drive-by shootings, which is terrible Correct. to say. So but a drive-by drive appraisal. What so what do, do they do? They drive by with their camera out and start taking pictures. And they use the pictures that you post in the MLS. And then they just kind of guesstimate. Don't you appraisals drive me nuts? Because it's one guy's opinion determines if this sale goes through or not. Correct. So, um, so what have been more difficult, uh, appraisals post COVID or pre COVID? No difference for us. I feel like it's been easier because yeah. I do not feel like they're appraising, they're under appraising properties as much. I actually kind of feel, and I don't know if this is good for the industry, but I feel like they don't care and they just want to get these things done. That's just my Listen, personal take on it. So here's what everybody forgets, okay? Just because an appraisal gets done and appraisal comes in at the purchase price doesn't mean we're done. Right. right. You can still renegotiate there, and stuff like that. No. Well, yes, you can. But on the lending side, 
we have an entire collateral department. There are several things that go on behind the scenes to right. confirm the quality of the work on that appraisal. Right. So a guy a takes score. it and sends it to a department. It's, there's a scoring model. There's right. a whole thing done behind the scenes. So, you know, when everybody in this crazy market is overpaying for properties right now, I insure them, you know, because you get it right. Nine right. out of 10 appraisers are going to appraise for what the purchase price is. Right. And no get, matter what the purchase price is. Right. So what happens is there's a lot of borrowers who want that appraisal. And, you know, of course, they want it to come in low. Right. right. When they when they overpay for a home, they want it to come in low. When they pay for what they think the home is worth, it comes in low, they get pissed. So right. at the end of the day, I always tell every borrower, you know, you have to understand that just because we get that appraisal and it value does not necessarily mean you're in the clear. Yeah. We, we do so many things behind the scenes because from a lending standpoint, we're basing the loan off the collateral. Right. You want to you, you want to make sure that this it's is done correct because uh, in the 08 crash, one of the things that happened was, you know, the, the, the fictitious appraisals. Correct. So like you're talking about everybody being backed up because these rates are so low and everything like that. And that's kind of really driving this market. When do you think these rates are going to go up? Have, have, have you heard any indications about this? I have no idea. Um, a big thing that we see a lot is people shopping rates. Yes. They shop lenders. Yes. Um, how does one lender's rates change from a different lenders? Why, why is that even possible? I don't know. You know, everybody's got a different appetite for what they're willing to do and not willing to do. You know, it's the same thing in your world. There's right. there's real estate agents that will work for probably half. But, you know, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for in life. And I think you and I understand that more than anything. Sure. Um, you know, there's a everybody's in the mortgage industry these days. Same with real estate. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, it's absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if you're going to an online lender where there's no service, there's somebody selling a mortgage who's been doing it for six months, go for it, right. right? You know, you get what you pay for in life. We give great rates. We have low fees. I don't lose transactions. You know, I tell everybody, and I never want to sound egotistical, but I don't get to be the number two loan originator in the country because I have high rates and high fees. Right. So and there's a reason why you get deals closed. A lot of people forget about... We have one right now that uh, looks like it's probably going to die. We did the walkthrough last night, but it's not going to close today. They're using a, a big online company. I won't name Correct. them. Correct. You probably know one of them, but they're not familiar with condos. Correct. So uh, we got the clear to close, but now they're taking back that clear to close, which is going to leave our clients in a bad position because they'll probably Correct. lose their earnest money, which that'll be a $50,000 loss for our clients because they decided to maybe save 50 bucks. Correct. So it's, it's, it's important to do your due diligence, but... You know, you hear a lot of these people talk about these rate cuts, rate cuts, you know, like we're dropping, you know, somebody says you'll do 3%, somebody else says they'll 2.9. Where does that uh, rate uh, come off? Are you dropping that off the principal or the interest when, you drop, when you're dropping rates? Both. Both? You know, the lower the rate, the more that goes towards principal, the less that goes towards interest. What, what do you, so like when we're talking about that, what do you think the differences are between like your big blue box banks, you know, like the, you know, B of A's, the Chase and things like guaranteed rate and quick and like smaller companies. Mm -hmm. What's the, is there a big difference between those type of companies? Oh, that's a loaded question. Uh, you know, listen, the banks, Fannie and Freddie come out with guidelines, mm -hmm. right? And we follow those guidelines and right. we're a direct seller to Fannie and Freddie and we sell on our side, the model is correspondent lending. So at the end of the day, we sell to different, you know, every financial institution that you do, we just have control over it. Right. So at the end of the day, when you go to a bank, whichever bank that might be, the bank has Fannie and Freddie requirements just like they do. Right. But then they will also put their own guidelines and overlays on top of the original guidelines, which is why they make it a little bit more strict. You go to a big depository bank right now on a conventional loan, which is a mortgage of 510400 or less, right. and they are requiring 20% down. We so, will still do that with 5% down. So they just have stricter rules, yes. and some people are always just more comfortable with using, let's say, a Chase or Bank of America, because that's where sure. their money is, and that's where they'll go. 
you know, and it's, uh, you know, listen, I work at a company called AmeriCorp. Right. Uh, most people have never heard of it. And I, we'll, we'll lose business, even though they like us more, because they're like, I've never heard of your company. I've heard of uh, Jameson or yep. App Properties or something yep. like that. So, like, you're naturally, you just can't win that battle sometimes. No, you uh, can't. And it is what it is. But um, I always say that's why they make red cars, black cars, and blue cars. Everybody's got their own opinion. Correct. There's no right or wrong answer. You know, a lot of people ask, what are the differences? So, you know, what, what about, like, uh, credit scores? Have, has that changed since COVID? Like, do you need a higher credit score you now? You need to- a 700 minimum FICO score for a jumbo mortgage. Okay. It used to be a little bit lower. You know, to get a decent rate, you needed a 680. Mm-hmm. Um, you've seen all those kind of broker channels completely shut down and go out of business. The guys that were doing, you know, 640 FICO scores right. with bank statement type loans. I mean, those loans all blew up when COVID hit. Those lenders went out of business. A driver's overnight. license and like a heartbeat and they used to heartbeat just give it to you. Heartbeat optional. Yeah. Heartbeat optional. Yeah. yeah. So like, do you think like with the reef, like do those credit scores still are required for even refis and stuff like that too? Yes. Is there a big difference between what you need for refi compared to a regular loan, like getting a new house? No. So everything's been kind of like kosher and it's just been remaining yeah, the same. Just, you know, in the jumbo world, credit's everything. If you have a 700 FICO score versus a 780 FICO score, that could be a quarter to half a point difference in rate. And and um, just for our people out there that aren't familiar with that, why uh, is a better credit score going to give you a better rate? Because you're demonstrating your ability to pay on time on a mortgage. So it's less risk, would it's you say? less risk. And you know, one of the analysis that is done and what determines FICO score is your ability to manage debt. Yep. You have a ten thousand. You have a credit card with a ten thousand dollar limit. And you don't have a ten thousand dollar balance on it. Right. Um, and the amount of trade lines you have as well. You know, we have some people. When you get a jumbo mortgage, there's guidelines out there that says you have to have a minimum of three open and active accounts. And we have people that pay cash for everything, and they have a good credit score, cash. and they understand. Well, why can't I get a mortgage? Yeah. It says, well, listen, you're 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 asking us to lend a million dollars in more in mortgage dollar to you but you have no history of your ability to pay debt on time right and that doesn't make somebody feel warm and comfortable when they're going to give you money who pays in cash i don't understand i hate you know what i hate most about cash is that like nowadays in this world like i i I forget where i put it because i never have it but then it's like whenever you have to tip somebody you know like you know like a service guy i want to be like can i venmo you you know what i mean because i don't i don't i don't like carrying cash it's even. cash but it's like a lot of people use debit cards that's true yeah and that debit cards have no credit it, it's not on your credit and it, it's like paying cash and i tell everybody use a credit card if you pay your credit card bill off every month who cares that that's not what creditors want from you right because right? that's why they charge 22 percent right but it's free money. So what about, so talking about that, um, you know, uh, we deal with a lot of international buyers. Um, you know, obviously a lot of them don't have a history of credit. Are they that just drying up right now? Very difficult right now. You're seeing, I've noticed a substantial difference in international home buying right now. Yeah. Substantial, not only because of COVID, uh, just because of the uncertainty of the market and also because of uh, the election, to be honest with you. A lot of people yeah. don't know what's going to, if there's going to be new laws getting changed. So uh especially in our you know southeast asian markets uh and some other european countries we're seeing almost honestly i can't remember the last time i sold an international sale yeah it's tough and i would say we probably were doing one probably one a day at at this time of year really yeah so it's it's pretty it's substantially different you're not it's hard and they can't get financing and depending on your visa type these days right you know the visa is a whole separate issue depending on what type of visa you carry what, what about uh, people taking out home equity loans? Are you seeing more of that? People pulling money out of their place? That market is, I don't want to say that market is frozen, but that market is significantly dried up. You saw the two biggest equity line lenders in the country virtually suspend equity lines right now. Once the COVID hit? Or Once it? COVID hit. Because uh, I would imagine that a lot of people um, aren't, you know, in a position to be lucky. They're in a job that you just can't be killing it in. You know, like we... Our industry was lucky. We got the golden ticket. We were able to work, and honestly, our business is doing great. But if you're a restaurant or in yeah. some sort of service industry, there's, you know, they're unfortunately they're just in a very tough position. I would assume they were trying to pull money out of their home to, to float the their credit home. lines are really difficult. Yeah, uh, you know, because they're in second position, so they're the ones who get left in the dust, and that's yeah. what happened ten years ago. Yeah. What, what about what about like where do you think lending is going to be going with the election? You know, for us, I say that. 
uh, election season is typically one of the slowest times uh, of a while. Like probably the presidential election is the probably the worst fall in four years coming up. I think this is going to be a very bloody election. So I, I anticipate probably the worst fall since I think like 2011 or 12. How do you think the election is going to affect the lending game? I don't. You don't think it's going to affect you guys at all? Do you think the rates will remain low during the that I don't know. I tell everybody if I could predict mortgage rates for a living, I sure as hell would not sell mortgages and I'd be retired living in the Caribbean somewhere. I think rates are going to remain low for the president, just just so on our record. I think <laughs> rates will remain low during the election because I think the Republicans are going to try to keep the economy as high as yes. possible to try to win this. I think even if the Democrats win, rates are probably still going to stay low. But I also think we're ridiculously spoiled. Right now, yeah. You know, you tell somebody 4% on a mortgage rate and they look at you like you're blue in the face. When I started, uh, I and I started in 06, we always put 7% down. You so, know? so I started around the same time and yeah. I was selling mortgages at 7 to 8%. Right. You had to pay a point to get it. Yeah. And now you tell somebody 2.99 or three and a quarter and they look at you like you're insane. Yeah. My old man tells me about, um, you know, he, you know, started in the seventies, told me like, you know, 18, 19% was actually not that bad for a while. So right. like when you think about an 18% rate, like putting it on a credit card and now people are pitching about a 3.5% rate. It, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. That's why I love when I get a customer who's of the older generation right. and, and they're like, this is, 3%, three and a quarter, because, you know, when somebody calls right. specifically right now mm -hmm. and gets pre-approved, you can't lock that rate until you go under contract. Right. So, so if you tell somebody 2.99% today mm -hmm. and it goes to three and a quarter two weeks from now, we're the bad guys. Right. Right. So what do you what do you think? Where do you think lending is heading? Do you think do you think this whole COVID situation is going to change the game up more or do you think everything's going to kind of get back to normal once? A cure comes out if that happens. Um, I think once 40 million people aren't out of work, you're yeah. going to see kind of the lower down payment loans come back into play a little bit. You're going to see restrictions ease up a little bit because they're not going to be worried about people not losing their jobs and people that are self-employed that their businesses are going to stay solvent, continue yeah. to operate. Yeah. Until then, I think it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And we're probably not going to see that till probably early spring by the time we start getting back to a real normal, you know. I don't even know what that means anymore, but yeah. Just a re regular normal life. Right. You know, it'll yeah. happen. I'm, I'm very yeah. optimistic about it. So we have something called the Fast Five where we ask you five questions. Um, the first one is, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Follow up. Fo follow up. Follow up constantly. Follow up's big in this business. Yeah. You know, you follow up, you're going to win. Um, do you love to win or do you hate to lose? Both. Both. That's a, you know, that's, that's technically not a right or a wrong answer. You okay. know, the corporate answer is that you're supposed to love to win. I hate to lose personally. I'm both. You, you don't like to do either. I know. Who's no, your, that's not true. I like both. I, yes. You like both. Yes. Who, I like both. Who's your biggest hero? My dad. Your dad. Most common answer are parents here, guys. So take, take that under uh, consideration when you're out there. If you can have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, one superpower would be probably a photographic memory. That's pretty good. Uh, mind control could be up there then too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Little Professor X. Uh, what makes you Chicago? What makes me Chicago? What yeah. does that even mean? I mean, it means like what makes you Chicago? Are you gritty? You, you like to grind? You like, I'm you, from Toledo, Ohio. Do you put ketchup on your hot dog? You know? I do because I'm from Toledo, Ohio. Oh, man. Um, do you I ride people's asses when you drive? I'm a very aggressive car driver. Yes. I mean, uh, so an aggressive car driver would yes. make you a little bit more Chicago. Yes. You go to Toledo, Ohio, and you drive the way you drive here in Toledo. What's going to happen to you? People are going to be like, who is this fucking nut job? Yes. They're right? going to look at my license plate and say, go back to Illinois. Right. Um, so where would people want to find you uh, and what would you like to plug? You can find me by just Googling Ben Cohen Mortgage, Ben Cohen Lens. We're on Instagram at Ben Cohen Lens. Uh, you know, just Google Ben Cohen Mortgage Broker and you'll see me hopefully pop up all over the place, whether it's Google, Yelp, Zillow. Hopefully his SEO placement is good there. All right. So uh, thanks for listening to the Matt Literacy Project. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook.